Hey, what's up, guys? Jag from Jaggy Sports. And <laughs> it's so funny. Um, basically, it's kind of like this. Uh, Clippers are playing at an elite level right now. Not elite for the number one spot, but I'm not saying elite level just to get in the playoffs in, in, the, in, that, in that tier of teams right there. Because every so often they keep um, coming back, keep, keep winning games. And what strikes me the most is they, they basically have no stars right now. And they're still pull, pulling off these wins because of Ty Lue. And, you know, it, how well are they going to be? How well are they going to be when Kawhi and Paul George come back? The Clippers came back from 35 points last night. 35! That the first half, that's unlikely enough. But then Luke Kennard had a four-point play with less than two seconds left to win it. Clippers beat the Wizards. J.J. Redick. Is J.J. Redick with me now? When NBA players are down 35, what are they thinking about, J.J.? They're thinking about... <laughs> Uh, making sure they get back to the locker room in one piece. Give the Clippers a lot of credit on this one. Uh, really disappointed in the lack of execution on that final p possession. Uh, they should have fouled Luke Kennard as soon as he got the ball. This is something that's taught by every team. There's under eight seconds, six seconds left. The second the guy puts the ball on the floor, you foul right away. And they tried, and they, they did it too late, and he hit an unbelievable shot. Uh, give the Clippers credit, but... Uh, a lot of this is on the Wizards. Yeah, you don't come down back from down 35 without taking advantage of the other team's mistakes. They ain't playing perfect and you're coming True. back. I don't care if J.J. If you got five J.J. Redick shooting on your team, you need some help. Anthony Davis, J.J., returned to the court for the Lakers for the first time since before Christmas. Now, he played 25 minutes, blocked four shots, caught an oop from LeBron as they beat the Nets, a team without KD or Kyrie, 106-96. Harden was aggressive, going for his league-leading fourth 30-point triple-double, 33-12 and 11. But LeBron put up 33 of his own, and the Nets were just not deep enough to compete. J.J., let's start with A.D. There's been a lot of drama around the Lakers in their mediocre first half. Especially, can he fix what ails them, especially on the defensive side? Absolutely. Uh, Frank Vogel, uh, LeBron, AD, they, they built two top three defenses in Frank Vogel's first two seasons. They were a top ten defense this season prior to Anthony Davis uh, spraining his knee. So to me, that's the biggest impact right away is he's going to help them out defensively, not only uh, because of his individual greatness and his ability to switch like you saw there onto Cam Thomas and defend shots, but he's just a, 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 a huge weak side defender. And what the Lakers lost in that Res Russell Westbrook trade was their big wing defenders, a la Kyle Kuzma, KCP. Let's assume for a second, AD is healthy from here on out, right? A big assumption, but let's just assume. And the Lakers finish, let's say, middle of the pack. How dangerous is this Lakers team as currently constructed in the postseason? They're very dangerous because they have LeBron James. And, and Anthony Davis also is a fantastic player. Uh, but playing against LeBron James in the playoffs is like being in a chess match. He's just so smart. His adjustments game to game are phenomenal. You can't count out a LeBron James-led team, especially when he's playing at the level he's playing at. If they can add a couple shooters uh, at the deadline or through buyouts, uh, this team will be dangerous in the playoffs. Seems like they, that was always the plan once they put this particular big three together. But the deadline, they're going to add some yeah. three and D guys if they can, if not at least some three guys, right? Uh, and at least two yeah, of those exactly. three guys you'd figure. Let's talk about the other team that played last night, J.J. KD is hurt. Kyrie is not going to play home games because he refuses to get the safe and effective vaccine. There are a number to choose from. There are rumors that Harden is frustrated with the load he's expected to carry. And now last night... Harden goes for a triple-double, 30-point triple-double in a loss, leading the league in that stat even though he had a slow start. You've been in locker rooms your, your whole life, basically. Does it feel like something is coming to a head in Brooklyn from where you're sitting? The burden of expectations carry a lot of weight. And if you look across the league, and, and the Lakers are in a similar position, when there is high expectations on a team and you underperform, the frustrations mount. So 
I, I would say any team that's in this situation, you're always sort of teetering on the edge of, of maybe a blow up and drama. And, and this is not going anywhere. Kyrie's firm in his vaccine stance. Uh, Katie's going to be out a while. I, I, I get James's frustration. And he's a human being. I always said as a player, you're allowed two blow ups a year. You're allowed two blow ups a year. The NBA is too intense and there's too many games <laughs> that, that you can't avoid frustration. You get two a year. What, what are the Nets players on, do you think, J.J., right now? Have they used up their quota or there's, there's more coming? Or what do you think? <laughs> there are people, no, J.J., I, I that... think they, st- they haven't yep. used up all their quota. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can expect more. Good. Lucky for us. I just want to see these three guys get it together. I want to see what this looks like once in my life. It would be incredible. There's never been a collection like this. No. There are people, people I respect, J.J., who think this is setting up for a Ben Simmons deal. Do you think Harden and Embiid, well, let me, let me rephrase, how good a fit would Harden and Embiid be? I mean, look, outside of Jimmy Butler, Joel has not really played with an offensive player like James Harden. No one to his level. I think the fit there is great. It makes a lot of sense for the Sixers. And I'm going to be honest with you, assuming Kyrie gets to play in some playoff games, this makes sense for the Nets, too. One of the reasons the Embiid-Simmons fit is so awkward at times, to me, Ben Simmons' best position in a playoff series is as a playmaking five. Similar mm-hmm. to Giannis, but he's a, little, he's a little better with the basketball. Same versatility defensively. Could you imagine Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons at the five in a playoff series? That team is really dangerous. So, basically... Um... Are the Clippers a threat? I keep telling you guys this. Like, you know, just just watch out for these guys, man. Like, these guys are dangerous. They're dangerous now. Just imagine how dangerous they're going to be when Kawhi comes back, when Paul George comes back. You know, like, it's, um, they drafted very well. Uh, that coffee guy, um, uh, What's his face? Uh, Kennard. No one. I didn't think uh, Luke Kennard would be this good, but he obviously is. Um, a couple draft uh, uh, picks. Um, it's just these guys don't. Want, um, Terrence Mann. These guys know how to draft well. They built their organization right. They built their organization the proper way, and uh, you gotta you gotta hand it to the Clippers, man. They know how to build an organization, and and their defense is unreal. Ty Lu is an unreal coach, and it's only a matter of time before they, uh, they before they actually start to be involved in that conversation of the Suns, the Warriors, the Nets, and now you know if it it all depends when Kawhi and uh, Paul George come back. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day. Look at these guys' roster. It is so freaking deep. You know, they, they could play anyone and still match up. So I heard a, I heard a rumor, a trade rumor, that Clippers will be sellers. I'm th- pretty sure Woj, that's, Woj said that. But if I'm Jerry West, I'm looking at the fact that these guys came back from a 35-point deficit from the Wizards, especially Bradley Beal had like 30 or 35 points in the first half. And still beat them. So, do you really want to be a seller? Like, knowing that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are just knocking on the door for their return, uh, most likely after All Star break, that's going to happen. Kawhi Leonard is training like a madman. Uh, he's very strong. Like, you know what I mean? Just Google his tapes and you'll see how strong this kid is. Um, so, basically, it's just it's just a matter of time. So my question to you guys is, is when Kawhi and Paul George come back, will the Clippers be involved in the conversation amongst the Phoenix Suns, amongst the Golden State Warriors, and obviously amongst the, the big three, the Nets? Will they be involved in that conversation? Leave a comment. Tell me, tell me what you guys think. Um, You know, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and uh, yeah, check out all the content that I'm spitting out. Jag from Jaggy Sports.